final countdown. Let's watch. Yo. Ignition. You see it pressing the button? Just spectacular. So we view from the long path. Okay, the tower is there. So the first operation will be the hitch over, which means that the flight direction will change from a vertical one to eastward. You're also going to be hear voices from the launch team providing different tracking status, saying things are good. You can hear them right now. That's the set we'd like to hear. There you have it, the heavily boat shipping away from its spaceport to the destination, the heavenly palace. We can hear the voice of the ground team reporting the status, as you mentioned, that, uh, the tracking the trajectory, and also the status of the every uh, physical subsistence on board the vehicle. And the trajectory is closely monitored by different ground tracking stations. You can see that uh, there were, actually speaking, there were six engines, uh, four on the boosters and the two on the core stage. And we're going to see several major movements in just a so few seconds. So this is a video seconds. from the camera mounted on the vehicle itself. Right, and that's the side boosters, right? Yeah, we can see two of the four boosters because it is at night, so we can only see the shadows of the booster and the, but the bright plates. Right, and the camera is positioned right above the side boosters on the body of the main core. Yeah. So we're looking down at the tail of the rocket. So the four boosters will work for more than two minutes. And, uh, and that's the infrared image. Yeah, yeah. So at this moment, it's already flying uh, southeastward. Uh, and after two minutes, the uh, critical point will be the separation of the four boosters. Mm -hmm. So the infrared video is also very clear. So by now, it has completed the pitch over already. It is already. Uh, okay. it has, you may notice that the direction is not vertical. Right. Vertically. OK. We're standing by for a so booster separation, a very we, critical we, we step. We just heard the voice reporting that uh, some of the ground stations track normally. But with different the camera, we can see that the flame uh, in a different color. <laughs> so it's flying uh, just above the Pacific Ocean. Mm. And it's about 10 minutes flight, right? The also, it's about 10 minutes long. also. Mm -hmm. So it's close to the separation of the four boosters. We're also seeing the animation of the you may notice that rocket the, the, at the bottom. Yeah, the, you may notice that the flame is already in a different so shape because all oh, great the oh, booster shut down, down. and separated. Right. Great. This is a successful separation. So the next we're looking will at the, four dots. Those are the yeah, separate yeah. boosters. And this moment, the first stage has already separated. There you have it. Okay, it's very First clear. Stage separation. Okay, the ignition of the second stage also goes very smoothly. The uh, the the second stage used four rocket engines, uh, called YF one one five rocket engines. So what are we seeing now, Professor? Uh, so this is a camera mounted inside the payload ferry. We can see that it's looking forward, and okay, the separation of the payload ferry is jettisoned. So roughly four minutes into the flight, we have seen fairing separation. Yeah. Uh, and now only the second stage of the launch vehicle remains, and uh, it will work much longer than mm -hmm. the first stage because it's already in a vacuum condition. Right, and they're already the in, the, in space. Right? Exactly. So uh, you know that's after the uh, okay, the tracking is normal. We can see that on the left of the screen is the camera mounted forward. We can see the Tianzhou 7 spacecraft. Mm -hmm. And on the right of the screen, we can see the camera looking backward and uh, monitoring the two of the four rocket engines. And you were saying because we're already in space, you don't need the, the fairy protection. Fair. Yes, so they do not have much strong airflow. So we not do not need that. Air. Exactly. So the next step, what we're so the what next step will be the shutdown of two fixed engines. Because you know that for the four engines on the second stage, two of the engines are fixed, and the other can have rotations mm -hmm. to change its directions. So we will first shut down the two fixed engines, mm -hmm. 
and then uh, with a very precise adjustment, we shut down the, the other two edges. So we are about 300 seconds, a little over five, okay, five minutes, minutes into the flight. Yeah. Can we say the most dangerous part of the flight is over? Quite right. The most dangerous part uh, happens during the separation of different stages. So especially in the atmosphere, because there are very strong aerodynamic forces, it will be a, a little bit uh, dangerous. And we can hear status from different teams. This is a huge group effort, obviously. Right, right. How many teams are working on it? Roughly how many people would work for a project like uh, this to let's, make it happen? Well, let's talk about that. Yes, the launch site system, the launch vehicle system, the Tianzhou spacecraft system, the TTNC system, and also the astronaut system. The astronaut system prepared for the cargo inside, and also, uh, you know, that's the Tiangong or the uh, space station system also must uh, attend this job. So at least uh, there are six or seven uh, systems attend this mission. Wow! And do we know how many people? Roughly hundreds? Well, I don't know because each different uh, each mission is different. Maybe also. You know, during every of our flight mission, there are also backup crew members. Mm -hmm. uh, for a certain function, we not only have the certain person, but we also have some back backup people. Mm -hmm. And we're still looking at the image of the, the first, video uh, mounted the on the stage. second stage. The on the second, second stage. stage, so only the second stage remained. And you can see that two nozzles of the oh, attitude oh, control oh, engines oh, of oh, the Tianzhou oh, spacecraft. Oh, and as the Tianzhou 7 is heading to the space station, is the Tianzhou 6 cargo craft still docked with the station? Uh, it's already separated. It's okay. already uh, detached from the Tiangong space station, and it will de orbiting soon, maybe okay. in, the in the coming, month, in the coming uh, months. Is it true that the Tianzhou 6 could also be used to carry some waste away from the station? Already uh, so much waste inside. <laughs> it is a rush, rubbish bin for our uh, Shenzhou crew. <laughs> So it'll be the same for Tianzhou 7 when it completes its yeah, mission. Yeah, exactly. So it's close to the end oh, of the flight. Of the... Great. An engine shut down. Separated. Oh, there you have it. The spacecraft separation. A warm round of applause there. I'm guessing that's the launch team. Yeah. We're just waiting for the big red screen. Yeah. Well, for the launch team, it's a successful launch so far, but for the team in Beijing, who's in charge of the whole mission, especially for the spacecraft flight, it's yeah, only yeah, beginning. Yeah. The, control, uh, the control will change from the launch side to the Beijing Aerospace Control Center. And at this moment, after unfolding of the solar panels, we will measure and verify the orbital parameters very carefully and very precisely. And only then the orbital parameters we measured is mm -hmm. precise enough and within the margin of mm -hmm. uh, what we allow the tolerance, we can announce that right. it is a successful launch. And Professor, looking at this, this is the animation of the Tianzhou 7 spacecraft, right? Talk to us about the spacecraft. What major components does it have? Well, you may notice that there are two parts of this uh, spacecraft. On the front is a cargo bay. The cargo bay can contain about uh, 6.7 tons of uh, pressurized payload. Great, we can hear the voice of the ground team that sends the orbital parameters. And inside that is the pressurized uh, cargoes. And uh, on the rear part, you can see the what we call the resource module. And uh, it has two uh, fo uh, unfoldable solar panels. Also have multiple uh, rocket engines. Uh, so there are four fuel tanks inside. And it provides the electric power and also propulsion. Mm -hmm. So it is a two module design. Two module and the solar panels are attached to the service module. Yes, all the resource module. Yeah. The next major step we are waiting for the solar panel deployment. Am I right? Uh, yes, uh, the unfolding of the solar panels will be a very important step, uh, which means that we can have continuous power supply to the spacecraft. This is, as you mentioned, it is a 3D uh, animation, but it is based on the real telemetry data, which means that it's, it can represent the real. Uh, circumstance of the spacecraft, the position, the attitude, and also other status. Great, I it. All right, a successful solar panel deployment. Yep. We're roughly 13 minutes into the flight. Because you know that at this moment the uh, Tianzhou Seven is still in the shadow of the of the Earth, so we cannot see any video from. Although we can get the video. 
another round of applause there. Some relief now for um, the ground team, a very smooth launch. Now I guess the ground team would do some calculation. The spacecraft will have some adjustment burns to exactly. better position itself for the to dock with Tiangong. Yeah, yeah. Only then the, we confirm that the optical parameters is accurate enough. Only under these circumstances, we have a chance to rendezvous and dock with Tianzhou Space Station. So that's very important. And how long is the Tianzhou 7 supposed to stay in space, do we know? As announced by the China Man Space Agency, you know that the Tianzhou uh, 7 uh, brings more than 2.4 tons of uh, cargoes for the daily life of our not only Shenzhou 17 crew, but also Shenzhou 18 crew. So it will stay in the station, attached to the station, I believe in most uh, of this year until the uh, just before the launch of the uh, Tianzhou 8 uh, mm. spacecraft. And when will the astronauts be allowed to open the door of the Tianzhou 7 cargo spacecraft? Uh, well, uh, just before what you asked, uh, you know that the Shenzhou 17 crew plays a very important role to ensure the success of this mission. You know that we choose an uh, automatic docking system, but if anything wrong happens to the automatic docking system, the Shenzhou 17 crew can switch the mode from the automatic one to a manual docking mode and they can pilot the Tianzhou 7 to dock with the space station. Mm -hmm. So the 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 residents of the Tianzhou 17 crew can ensure the sex success of this mission. After the docking, we must have very important checking of the inner environment of the uh, Tianzhou 7, uh, mainly the atmosphere inside. We do not allow any hazardous gas inside. So only under this, and also the proportion of oxygen inside is fit for the uh, for the living of the astronauts, and also the temperature is good. Only under these circumstances, we can open the hatch. So we can see there is not much movement there. Tell us what is happening there inside the spacecraft or for the ground team. Just at this moment, the Tianzhou Seven is orbiting the Earth at the Pacific Ocean. Uh, so we have the uh, connection with the Tianlian data relay supply. Mm -hmm. So the parameters, uh, not only the orbital parameters, but other uh, status of the all, is all kind of subsystems can transfer from the Tianlian data relay supply to the ground station. So at this moment, we can uh, monitor and also verify not only the orbital parameters, but other things. So only. Uh, we verify that the, as I mentioned, the uh, orbital parameters is precise enough. So only at this moment, we can announce that it is a successful launch. Hmm. We are 1100 seconds, that's about 20 minutes yep. into the flight. If you're just joining us, you're watching our special coverage of the launch of Tianzhou 7 mission into the space. You're watching the Tianzhou 7 spacecraft flighting in space now, heading toward the Tianzhou space station. Dear leaders, experts, and colleagues, according to the flight data of Long March 7, 18 carrier rocket, as well as the monitoring and calculation of Beijing Flight Control Center, the Tianzhou 7 cargo ship has entered its targeted orbit, solar panels are deployed, and the cargo ship is flying in good shape. Now I declare that this is a successful launch. Thank you very much. There you have it. China's Manned Space Engineering Office has just announced the success of the Tianzhou 7 cargo spacecraft. The launch of it is a success. That's the confirmation.